From as early as a Canadian child can begin to walk, the game of hockey is introduced into their life. Hockey is a passionate, team-driven sport that exposes the true character in oneself. The love of the game from its players, both past and present, is unmatched and memories unforgettable. The sky is the limit for how far a hockey player can take it, with many factors determining personal success. Heart, skill, and determination are just a few of the inner intangibles necessary for a hockey player to succeed, while coaching, parental support, and development are of no less importance. A great hockey player is not just simply born overnight, yet bred through years of blood, sweat, and tears. The critical foundations of successful professional hockey players are built through the development in the minor hockey stages. The City of Toronto arguably boasts one of the best minor hockey leagues in the world, that being the Greater Toronto Hockey League. From the players to the coaches and everyone involved in the running of the league, it sets a standard of the highest caliber in all aspects of the game. Oh, I think the GTHL is uh, probably the most highly competitive league in, in the world. Well, obviously this is the premier league. I mean, there's the majority of the players. If you look around, I mean, the coaching in a lot of respects is is better because there's some ex-pros now that are coming back to coach. So I'd say it's the Premier League. The hockey is played at a very high level. Um, it, it's a good taste of what happens as you get older, even when you're younger, because the whole situation of the coaches being paid coaches, you know, you're almost treated not necessarily as, you know, as a developmental player, you're, you're, you're treated as a piece of property well, if you don't do well, it's the next guy. Next guy goes in, right? It's usually, uh, uh, you know, if not the best, the best. Uh, if a lot of you usually have your pr premier teams are usually in, in Toronto. Definitely the level of competition is much higher. The hockey is, is the best hockey, that, uh, junior hockey, that you'll find probably in the world for, for that level. Uh, we've had good success from players in that area, so it'd be nice to find another good one from there for sure. Minor hockey, like many things in life, tends to change and evolve. Whether this is better or for worse for the sport of hockey is up for debate. Rule changes are commonly brought up and cemented into today's game, ones that never existed years ago. But rules are not the only thing changing the game. Young players' speed and skill are at an all-time high, and the aggression displayed in hockey years ago has seemed to take the back seat. I don't think that... Uh... I, I did what the kids are doing now at this young age, that's for sure. I was always a centerman. I went to the reps, and he put me back on defense because I was a fairly decent skater, I guess, at the time, and uh, I was really upset about it. I remember crying on the way home because I wanted to be a centerman. I wanted to be like Davey Keon. Uh, my dad, listening to the, the whimpering long enough, turned around and said a few choice words. <laughs> keep quiet, stop your whining, and then he said to me, how many defensemen are, how many forwards are on our team? And I said, there's nine. He said, how many defensemen are on our team? And I said, there's four. He says, you're going to get more ice time. Give it a try, you never know. Well, they were fun. I mean, we won a championship in Novice. Uh, you know, it was, uh, the parents were pretty into it, and uh, we were as kids. Uh, uh, we always, my parents were real supportive of it, and, you know, growing up, always played on good teams, went to a lot of tournaments, and, uh, Got to spend some time away, you know, having fun in the hotels and getting in trouble uh, off the ice and having fun on the ice. So it's, uh, it was good. I never won anything. I tell my kid, my you know, my two boys, I didn't win anything until I got to, to the NHL. 
And I think I think hockey back then, not that it's it's a little bit different now. It was a little more innocent back then. Well, maybe the emphasis on on winning in, in certain areas is amped up a little bit. It's, it's changed a lot now. It's became uh, become a little bit of a, a business, good or bad. Their caliber from when I was playing the game at that age is completely different. They're a lot more developed now. Well, the kids are definitely better. You know, the, the game is bigger, faster, stronger. When I was that age, I was too busy just trying to stand up. You've got kids now that are firing that puck over the top of the net. <laughs> you know, at the end of the day, for the most part, uh, you know, as a player, it's about getting to the rink, competing, having fun with others. And, uh, you know, as, as a coach, uh, getting there and trying to develop young players and, uh, and uh, you know, having fun with it. Formed in 1967, the Toronto Young Nationals have been a household name in the Greater Toronto Hockey League. Starting as a tribute to Canada's centennial, the Young Nationals, more commonly known as the Young Nats, have been developing top-tier athletes for over four decades. The 2011-2012 Young Nats, guided by head coach Jamie Fawcett, finished in the middle of the pack in the competitive GTHL minor midget standings. For the 15-year-olds playing on the team, it was a big year in terms of exposure, with the OHL draft just around the corner. Jamie, who's our head coach, his tone towards the kids at the beginning of the season was, it was a little rough, I guess, if you didn't know who he was. Well, he yelled a lot, and he swore a little bit. You know, he was an equal opportunity yeller at, at everybody. If you, didn't, if you didn't do anything right or did something wrong, he would yell. And a lot of kids at the beginning of the season got discouraged because of that, and we had a few that actually had quit the team because of it. You've got to develop a bit of a thick skin. You know, don't listen to the yelling. You know, don't take it personally. Just listen to what he's saying and, and just move on. Don't, don't take it personally and, and don't get upset about it and, and just look forward and be positive. And the, the kids that took that advice and, and that thought of it that way were the ones that are now successful on this team. And the ones, I guess, that couldn't take it, uh, those are the ones that ended up quitting the team. I'm the head scout for Guelph, so I do the entire area. And they have a pretty solid, hardworking team, and it's good to see them here. Uh, in particular, the, the Smith twins are, are two players that uh, really caught my eye this year. You know, probably those two are the, the two players that really stick out. The last chance for kids to show their talents comes every year at the OHL Showcase Cup. This tournament features 20 of the top minor midget teams in Ontario and the USA. Scouts from all over embark on this tournament to find the future stars of their respected teams. Every scout uh, is there. Usually the, every OHL team has their, their final meeting after uh, the OHL Cup. It's a huge showcase and uh, it's kind of the cherry on top for uh, you know, a season of hard work. It's on TV. Reporters are there. Scouts are there. So all those different external pieces of pressure start seeping in. So it's a big challenge. It truly is, and they're young, right? There's a lot of development, just in maturity-wise, that a, a young athlete has to go through. So it, it's a big difference. Our staff obviously covers Toronto heavily. I've got my area. I cover Michigan and the Alliance. So this is a crossover for me. So I'm looking at guys that we maybe think are gonna be in certain rounds and I'll just agree or disagree to that at the next meeting. You know, at the end of the day, usually, you know, 40 to 50 percent of the players drafted in the OHL draft come from Toronto, so it's a pretty important area. And I think a lot of teams measure themselves in tournaments and, and the like uh, against Toronto teams because they, they have that reputation of being, you know, the best. Well, this is the final tournament of the year, and, uh, you know, by this time, all the teams have got everybody rated. So, I mean, it's your last opportunity maybe to move guys up or down or, you know, wherever you think they should fall in, in the, you know, the appropriate rounds. Usually by the OHL Cup, you have a pretty good handle on the players and, and their attributes and, you know, what they need to uh, improve on. So at this shoot, you're just kind of looking to see who can emerge. That's what I look for. I look for guys that really come to the surface, you know, play their best hockey of the year. And those are the guys that are going to move up on the draft list. We'll see how everything unfolds on April 7th. Well, we're down our, our three top, three of our top six forwards. And we have some 97s called up, so we have like four 97s. Game one versus the Don Mills Flyers. The Young Nats kicked the tournament off facing GTHL rivals, the Don Mills Flyers.
he hit me up, so we all came up. Hey, we a good first period. We outplayed them all day. But uh, second period, we ran out of gas. Right? Get your body in position to get that outlet, all right? Outlet. Give everybody an outlet, guys. We came out the first about five minutes. We were coming out of our end great. And then we got a little tired. All right? After a tight finish, the Nats squeeze out a one-goal win with a score of 2-1 to one to open the tournament. Okay guys, sit down. These guys got a little bit winded. They stayed on a little long. The short bench, I know that. How'd that first one, how'd that one get in there anyways? Uh, it was tip. Alright, way to go boys. Behind every young hockey player is a compelling wealth of support. It may be from parents, coaches, friends, or family. Wherever it comes from, it is a necessity for all young players to succeed. Rides to games and practices, off-ice conditioning and training, moral support, equipment purchases. The backbone of a hockey player is the people behind them helping them every step of the way. Well, it depends who you ask. My wife would say too much and I would say not enough. I love it. I love it. I mean, it's, you know, I got two boys. You're eight days a week. Some days you double up. For me, I've got uh, two kids in rep. One, one plays uh, Adam in AAA in the GTHL, and my oldest son, Christian, is on Jamie's team. So between the two of them, it was basically seven days a week and sometimes two times a day of traveling, practices. You start to lean on some of the other parents on the team for support, right? Um, we have a couple of the, the kids on Christian's team that, that live in our area, so we we try and do as best as we can to kind of carpool with the parents that we know. It's pretty busy. I mean, you know, it's maybe one one day off a week is uh, is a bonus. I think with having two kids and coaching and uh, doing all all kinds of things like that, it's uh, it's pretty rare to uh, to have a day off. Sometimes uh, I don't know if I need a couch in my house. Uh, or a TV, because I'm always uh, going here, going there with, with kids and coaching and things like that. Game number two of the tournament brings the Huron-Perth Lakers of the Alliance League. With two games in two days and several bodies on the mend, the young Nats find themselves in a tight battle throughout the entire game. I don't think this team is as strong as Don Mills, but you can't take anything lightly. So you just got to keep playing the same way. You just can't have that net front deep jump in the corner without F3 being aware and without that communication. Let's go. All right, let's go, guys. The Nats got out to a 3 to nothing lead, but with many injuries and a shortened bench, fatigue started to set in. Well, the good news is you're up 3 nothing. The bad news is, is in my penalty kills looking like the Toronto Maple Leafs. Right? Since when on my penalty kill do I have two guys in the corner in the offensive zone? In the end, the Nats would take the game by a score of 4-3. to three. Those guys played so much the first game, right? So now you're expecting them to be there for the second game, you know, and then they fell off a little bit. So hopefully we, they can, those guys can recharge and be ready for third game, game three. Day three of the tournament, the Young Nats going up against another undefeated team in the Ottawa Junior 67s. The Nats in the 67s battled to a 0-0 opening period. After a scoreless first period, Thomas Letavel made it one to nothing for the Nats, finishing off his own rebound. The Nats would go on to hold off the 67's attack 
all the way up until 6 minutes remaining into the third period. With the goal, both teams would skate into overtime. Only a minute into the sudden death period, a 67th forward would sneak by the defense and bury on Daniel Potter, handing the Young Nats the first loss of the tournament. When it comes to parental involvement in the game of minor hockey, there are two sides to every coin. The line between encouragement and animosity can easily become blurred by frustration and pride. For many parents, I don't know if they understand the pressure that they're putting on it. They want the best for their kid. And if they see the child, um, if they see the skill developing over time, then the competition piece starts kind of creeping up a little bit more. My, my son Christian, when he was younger, I was extremely vocal. I, 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 some people would call me a, a nut parent because he was my first kid, you know, going up, you know, every little thing that went wrong, you know, I, I'd almost take it personally. Unfortunately, we all, I'm a parent too, we get too involved. Almost every group that I work with, with young athletes, a source of pressure is a significant other parent. Once there's formal coaching, I think the parents should step back. Most, most parents, I think, uh, they have no idea of the ref's responsibilities on the ice, um, mostly because they're looking at the game from a single point of view. Like their, their vision is from the same spot all the time. They're never moving. Uh, as referees, our field of view is moving all the time. And what they may perceive as a penalty or not a penalty is sometimes totally wrong because they're looking at it from a completely different angle. The refs aren't there to be um, chastised. They're doing their best and that, uh, you know, they're not professional hockey referees. They're, they're amateur referees and, and they're going to make mistakes. We've had, we've had instances off the ice where parents have gotten a little too close. Um, you try to keep your distance. You try to stay away and not agitate the person. I mean, that's what we're told, um, no matter, you know, how I rate that parent gets, your best bet is just to walk away. I, I think sometimes they use it as an outlet, you know, to get rid of their frustrations too, and, 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 and something that they're not happy about, they figure here's a perfect opportunity for them to act in a fashion that they no normally wouldn't. You know, screaming at the ref, screaming at your kids, screaming at the other kid, it's gotta be exhausting by the time the game's over. Parents gotta leave like they just played the game. I mean, it doesn't have to be as bad as it is sometimes because some go way overboard. I've seen some uh, some of the uh, mothers screaming at the refs, profanities. I've had a couple of water bottles thrown at me. Uh, been threatened a couple times. I think that it's a like anything. It's a percentage of of the parents who seem to have a great disturn for officials and and you know like to chastise them and shout and scream at them and uh, but I think that's a small minority. And standing in the crowd, unless you're unless you're gonna yell encouragement, I mean there's, there's no sense yelling. All it does is the kids go the other way. It is and confidence and positive encouragement goes a long, long way. You know, nothing you can say can change what goes on on the ice. And um, and I, I had to learn that lesson, I guess you could say, even the hard way sometimes. Leave them alone and let them do their jobs and, uh, and really just sit back, enjoy, and encourage your son. Game four. The Young Nats would go head-to-head -head with the Sun County Panthers. The game was set up to be a win and you're in for the Young Nats. The Nats found themselves falling behind on the scoreboard, prompting Coach Fawcett to make a late timeout call. With a terrific individual effort, Chris Coben sealed the win for the Nats with a huge goal. Daniel Potter once again stood on his head, robbing a Sun County Panther on the back door with seconds left. With the win, the Young Nats clinched the second seed in Division II, sending them to the corner finals. Good game, guys. Way to battle in there, eh? Way to battle, way to, way to gut check that out. A couple of let downs, and uh, we just fought, kept fighting, kept fighting, and didn't, and didn't get behind. Good job. Everyone, make sure you drink some water, boys. Advancing into the quarterfinals, the Young Nats found themselves up against the powerhouse Mississauga Rebels, also of the Greater Toronto Hockey League. Marking the fifth game in five days and short on bodies, the Young Nats battled to a 4 to nothing loss, ending the tournament for the team and ultimately wrapping up the long season. 
the Rebels would go on to defeat the Toronto Marbles in the finals and take the OHL Cup. Some of the parents think their kids are going to the big show. And, I mean, to get there, you really have to be something special. It's not going to be the end of the world if you lose or if you win. After minor midget or junior, it could be the end of the road, but, um, you know, but they're, they're our future. Some of these guys are going to go on to be, you know, lawyers, doctors, you know, teachers, educators. Some kids, it doesn't matter how much money you throw at it, how hard they work, some are going to be better than others. And my dad always said to me, a lot of guys can become better, few become great. And that's a, that's a note that every parent should, you know, realize. You, you know, you take your kid, you drive them to the rink, all you should ask for is that they work hard. If they get better, that's great. If they get good, that's great. If they come great, it's okay too. But few do. During childhood, sports are played as games, pastimes, and for social and personal development. As we grow, these sports become professions and aspects of innocence are lost. This begs the question, is hockey just a game? Wow, that's, that's a great question. I'm not a religious guy, but I guess it's a, re it's a religion in Canada. Hockey's, uh, you know, it's, it's a part of life, you know, it's a way of life and, uh, you know, it's, uh, you know, I love it. Our whole family's, uh, you know, deeply entrenched in the game of hockey. So yeah, it's, I mean, it's definitely a, a part of our life, a huge part of our life. It is a game, but it definitely is something more. Our hockey is just a fabulous game. I mean, uh, you can't beat it. Well, at its core, foundational piece is still a game, but it's much more than that. You know, work becomes stressful at times. Hockey's easy. It's a very comforting feeling for me walking into the rink because it's what I had did and I think what I do well. So it's very common. It's about teamwork. It's about individuality. It's about uh, putting out an, an effort. It's about learning to, to uh, get along with others. The teamwork, the camaraderie, the, the not quitting, you never quit. Work hard, stay true to yourself, stay true to your teammates, don't cheat the game. It's the greatest game on earth, without a doubt. Just us being here together, it's more than a game. It goes by in a flash. Can't wait to go to the rink, I can't wait to see my kids, I can't wait to fire them a couple one-liners, have some fun with them, and that's it. The cycle of minor hockey never stops. Seasons end and players move on. Teams are dismantled and new alliances formed through next year's tryouts. Some players advance to higher levels while others may leave the game entirely in search of greener pastures. Wherever players may take themselves, the memories of minor hockey go along. The lessons learned, skills developed, friendships made, all stick with the individuals for years to come. It is a game that gives back just as much as you put into it. A game that thrills, challenges and excites brings people together and can possibly pull them apart. For all of the things that hockey is, it's simply not just a game.